part 2 Helvetia's Hooligans. Of course, not all children on this little known stretch of New England's shoreline behaved so abominably. Farther up the coast in the town of Hasty Pudding, children were especially kind. In the town below that, in Hamburger on Bonn, children were well-mannered and even the boys and girls of Swiss on Rye were known to be friendly. By the time you got down as far as chin in hand, however, where Mr. and Mrs. Werbler had moved with their daughter, people just didn't much care. Times were hard and there were other things to worry about. So, every morning Roxy got out of bed and put on her school uniform, her green knee socks, her brown and green plaid skirt, her green shirt and brown jacket. Her clothes were about as dull as she felt inside. She bravely said goodbye to her father and kissed her mother and wondered how to get through another day. If she went early, she discovered she could go inside and help the teacher dust the erasers. But then the hooligans waited for her after school and tried to hang their book bags on her ears. So she asked the teacher if she could stay in after school as well and empty waste baskets. Miss Crumbly said, of course. But when Roxy came out, the hooligans were still there, and they tried to tape her ears to the sides of her head with strapping tape. Her hair stuck to the tape and her ears burned, and when she finally got away and ran home, she had red marks on both cheeks. The only person who befriended her was a large boy named Norman, who wore thick glasses and had to squint to read his primer. Those kids are like sharks, Roxy, he said. They're mean to me, too. They're always trying to take my glasses. Then I can't see anything at all, and I bump into stuff. I know, said Roxy. I'd help if I could, said Norman. I know, said Roxy. If only she was half as brave as Uncle Dangerfoot. If only she was one-fourth as brave as Lord Thistlebottom. If only he would write the Book of Hooligans and how to survive them. Roxy told her mother that she would be going to school very, very early morning to help her teacher, and she would be staying very, very late to help even more. Just how many erasers can you possibly dust? asked Mrs. Warbler. How many waste baskets can you empty? How many desks are there to wipe? asked Mr. Warbler. Oh, there's a lot of work to be done, said Roxy and her parents were glad to know that she was a help to the teacher, so they let her be. One Tuesday, Roxy got up an hour early. She made her own toast and cocoa and got to school just as the sun was beginning to rise over the ocean a block away. The only person at school at this hour was Norman, sitting on a bench and eating a breakfast of fish and chips. Not even the teachers or principal had come to school yet. So Roxy and Norman sat together and watched the gulls circling over the playground. And then Roxy saw them, the hooligans coming through the gate. Freddy Filch was holding something gray under one arm, and Smokey Joe was waving something white in the air. What have they got? Norman asked, squinting his eyes. I don't know. Smokey Joe looks like she's carrying a flag, maybe, said Roxy. And she began to hope. A truce flag, perhaps? A peace flag? The hooligans were yelling. What are they saying? asked Norman. I'm not sure, said Roxy. The hooligans came straight toward them. Smokey Joe was not waving a flag at all. She was waving a pair of her brother's underpants, and Freddy, strangely, was carrying a carton of eggs. Hey, Roxy, said Helvetia. We figured your head was cold. Yeah, Roxy, you need a cap, said Simon Sarley. Your ears will just fit through the leg holes, said Smokey Joe, swinging the underpants around and around over her head like a lasso. And then, said Freddy Fultz, we're going to glue those pants to your head with eggs. 
You'll be the slimy creature from public school number 37. Run, Roxy, whispered Norman. What you say, old boy? asked Simon, snatching his glasses. Give those back, Norman demanded, but he couldn't even see who had them. Roxy leapt off the bench and began to run, but the hooligans had blocked the gate. All she could do was run around and around the playground. The hooligans picked up gravel and threw it at her legs to make her stop. Roxy's heart was racing. Her head began to pound. Do not panic, she remembered. To avoid gunfire, run in a zigzag line. Roxy ran in a zigzag line. Ping went a piece of gravel as it hit the school building. Pong went another piece as it hit a swing. There must be something I can do, Roxy thought in desperation. There must be somewhere I can hide, if only she could get inside the building. But she tried the door and it was locked. Then she saw that a window was open ten feet off the ground. The school's big blue dumpster sat beneath the window. Two trash cans sat beside the dumpster. Roxy made a dash toward the corner of the building. Splat! Something hit her ankle. Freddy was throwing eggs. Roxy scrambled on top of one of the trash cans. Splog! Another egg hit her knee and began sliding down her leg as Roxy climbed up the side of the dumpster. She's going for the open window! shouted Helvetia as more eggs hit Roxy or landed on the rim of the dumpster. After her! There came the sound of scraping and scrambling as the hooligans began to climb. Freddy must have decided to throw all the eggs now, Roxy realized, to keep her from reaching the window for they spluttered here and there. At the top, Roxy shakily got to her feet and tried to balance as she started along the dumpster's rim toward the window. Raw eggs hit her knees. They covered her shoes. They glistened on the rim of the dumpster. Roxy held her arms straight out at her sides as though she were Uncle Dangerfoot crossing a river on a log. But the eggs made it too slippery and just before Smokey Joe's head appeared over the edge of the dumpster, Roxy fell in. It was warm and wet and smelly in the dumpster. It smelled like banana peel, paste pots, and old gym suits, but Roxy didn't make a sound. Hey, yelled Smokey Joe, she is not here, I don't see her. Then old elephant ears must have got through that window bellowed Helvetia as she too came over the top, then Freddy and Simon all struggling to raise themselves up and walk along the dumpster's rim to the open window of the school. But one by one they slipped on the slimy eggs and fell in, Helvetia up to her armpits, Simon up to his chin, Freddy with only his nose sticking out and Smokey Joe upside down. Just at that moment, Roxy heard a terrible roar from outside, like a dragon with a belly ache. Above the roar, she heard Norman's frantic yell. And before she could get one leg out of the garbage, before she could even peek out over the bin, the roar became deafening. She heard a clunk, then a clunk, and in the next instant, Roxy and the hooligans were tumbling about inside the dumpster as it rose up, up into the air. Little did they know that it had been lifted onto the back of a flatbed truck and soon they would be rolling down the highway toward the sea.